So now on to OpenJDK. Right, so OpenJDK is the source version of the um, Java that they give instructions to build. Now it actually looks like we've got most of this installed interestingly. I wasn't going to install the source version, I was just going to, my plan was just to install the um, binary version for now, but I'm surprised how much of this stuff we've got installed. So maybe that we could, we've obviously got wget and that's a rebuild. Um, I may actually install this, you know. The, the TWM we're obviously running. Let's just link, click on those links to highlight them. Um, it's just really mercurial. But we need a binary version anyway. You need it's like a chicken and egg thing. You need a, a version of Java to build Java. So they kindly package up for us a binary which we can download. So let's download that. There's two here. There's the 32-bit version which I'm going to download because I may I'll keep these packages in case I want to build on a 32-bit. Now to be quite honest. Unless it's very fast loaded a bit, it's unlikely that you'll want to build it. But um, you may have a server that may want to run Java, just text-based Java stuff. So that is that is a possibility. But yeah, because of that, I'm going to download both versions. Um, right, this looks like it's directly from the Oracle website. All oh, right, it's coming down. That's good. So we've got all the dependencies for the runtime, so that's good. So all we need to do now is wait for these two to finish downloading. Um, and while that's doing that, I'm going to have a look at this Mercurial. CPIO shouldn't be too onerous. I wouldn't have thought, no, that's okay. Mercurial might have a few prerequisites. It looks like it just needs pigment, pigments. Let's have a look at that. Let's check that we haven't got that already installed. Oh, we have the looks of it. Let's have a look to see if it actually did get installed. Use a uh, lib python. 3.8 site packages and there it is there yeah so it's definitely installed right now I'm not sure if there's a rebuild relying on this or something saying to rebuild this but there's no dependencies so it's a version documentation yeah I'd say that can be built as well. So yeah, I think I'm going to go and install the source version of Java and that I think enables some rebuilds anyway. So that will be useful. Um, let's have a look for this pigments. No, it must have been something else I was looking at. There isn't anything there. So Let's wait for this Java to download still. In fact, let's install CPIO while that's downloading. It's only a small package. So it looks like we don't have any extra options to put in or any other choices. So we'll just build the package as it's given to us. So 
So that's complete. Let's build some documentation. Now we've got text live. And we can run the tests. We'll test successful. And finally, let's do an install. And install the PDF and PostScript documentation. And that's complete. So that's under chapter 12. CPIO. Let's get rid of that and tidy up. Okay, so this Java binary version has downloaded the 64 bit. And so we've already got the dependencies installed, so let's extract the Java, which is open JDK 64 bit. So remember, we're just installing a pre compiled version that the LFS team have built and not only would, well it would have got us going for graphics but as I say beings we've got most of the dependencies installed already for the source build I'm going to build OpenJDK from source as well and we need this binary package anyway so JDK and we what do we do here begin by extracting the appropriate binary your architecture and changing to extract a directory so that's as usual install the binary with the following commands as the root user so as you can see there's no installation or, or rather configuration or building to do uh, keep on doing this today for some reason right So that's it. Looks like all we're doing is moving the extracted files into a place into opt. The binary version is now installed. You may create a similar to that version by issuing as a root user. So again, with the opt directory, we're creating a, a generic link that points to the version um, the versioned name of the software installing. And now you can see um, the JDK is pointed to this binary version we just installed. So you may now proceed to configure the Java environment which, where the instructions assume the above link exists. So we should do this to update the environment to allow us to run Java correctly and find its libraries and so on and, and set the class path. Sudo is installed which it is. SIP users should have access to above variables. Let's add that in. Allowing MANDB to include OpenJDK main pages in its database issues the root user. Okay. And then setting up certificate authority certificates for Java. So it uses its own format for the CA certificates. In order to keep these certificates in one place, we use the ETC SSL Java CA certs. Instructions on make CA page previously created the file located in etc SSL Java. Set up a sim link in the default locations root user. And using the following command to check if the CA certs has been installed. Um, at the prompt enter the key store password, change it. And it looks like yeah, list of certificates related information for each one. So that's all worked as well. So we can get rid of that and tick off the binary version of Java as being installed. 